Okay, uh, 5.4 factoring uh, complex numbers. So, uh, properties of negative roots. The point is you can't have a negative root. So what you need to do is um, we split them up as in a square root of a negative 1 and then whatever the number is left over. So you basically take a negative 1 out of underneath. Um, negative 1, the square root of a negative 1 is i. So we do that so we can actually solve problems that have negative roots. We take that negative root out and we make that an i in order to solve it. So it's actually i square root of r is what that would be. So if I had um, the square root of negative 5, I would separate that into the square root of negative 1 and the square root of 5. And just remember, whenever you have a negative underneath, you basically pull that negative out and make it an i. So square root of negative uh, 5 would be i root 5 as your answer. Um, square root of r, or sorry, i square root of r squared. Well, what that means is you have two of those. So i times i is i squared. Square root of r times the square root of r is uh, the square root of r squared. Well, that's i squared. The square root of a square cancels out, so you end up with um, r, just an r there. But uh, we need to remember some things um, about this. Um, these two items cancel, so that's negative, and we end up getting a negative r. So what that means is you square that, you get i squared, and you square root a square, you end up getting whatever numbers underneath because they cancel out, so you end up getting a 3. So I should get 3 and a negative 1, so negative 1 times 3 is negative 3 as my answer. Um, but what you need to keep in mind is i squared is negative 1. Okay, i squared is ne uh, a negative 1, so i is root negative 1 and i squared is negative 1. So, we go to solve this. Um, I need to get all the numbers on the one side here, so let's move that 10 over. So I would subtract 10, and by doing that, it crosses out. I get 3x squared equals negative 36. 3 times x squared. 3 times x squared is a division, so I divide both sides by 3. Cross that out, I get x squared equals negative uh, 12. I square root, and when I square root, you get a plus or minus, remember, but keep this in mind. It's a negative, so I have to pull that out. So it's actually an i root 12. So I can split 12 into 4 and 3. And the square root of 4 is 2. But remember, this should be plus or minus um, 2i root 3. Sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes you don't. Complex numbers come in the form of a plus bi, meaning a regular number and a number with an i. So, for example, 5 plus 3i is an example. 4 minus 8i um, is an example. Yo, that's rich, baby. Imaginary numbers are numbers that have i's in them. So a number with just the i or a number uh, plus a number with an i. But the number with the i can't be 0. You can't have a 0i or that will not work. Pizza, pizza. Pure imaginary number is the same thing as a complex number. So that's like a plus bi. So 2 plus 3 is a pure imaginary number. Negative 5 plus 4i is a pure imaginary number. Negative 3 minus 9i, that's a pure imaginary Mama number. Mia, that's a spicy meatball. When you graph imaginary numbers, this axis is the imaginary axis right here, up and down. So vertical axis here is imaginary. And the horizontal is the real. So when you graph 2, negative 3i, that means you go over 2 on the real, because 2 is a real number and you go down 3 on the imaginary axis uh, to graph 2, negative 3i. If you want to graph negative 3, 2i, that means you start in the center and go over negative 3 on the real, and you would go up 2i on the imaginary axis. You uh, distribute the same way with i's, so 5 times negative 2 is negative 10, 5 times i is positive 5i, so that's really all you got to do with i's. You can FOIL with them as well. 7 times negative 1 is negative 7. 7 times 2i is 14i. Negative 4i times negative 1 is positive 4i. And 4i times 2i is negative 8i squared. You combine your like terms and you end up getting 18i. But you got to remember i squared. i squared equals negative 1. So we can substitute by plugging a negative 1 in there, and we can combine those. So we end up with 18 i's 
and that's a negative 1. So negative 8 times negative 1 is positive 8. Negative 7 plus 8 is 1, so you end up with 1 plus 18i. You can even distribute here. 6 times 6 is 36. 6 times negative 3i is negative 18i. 3i times 6 is positive 18i. 3i times negative 3i, well, 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. i times i is i squared. And i squared, remember, is negative 1. But this negative 18i and positive 18i, they cancel out. So really, I have a 36, and i squared is negative 1. So a negative 9 times negative 1, it's positive 9. So 36 plus 9 is 45. There's only one right one, baby. You got the right one, baby. OK, so um, you can't have i's in the bottom, just like you can't have roots in the bottom, just like you can't have rational exponents in the bottom, which we'll get to. So since you can't have an i in the bottom, we have to figure out a way to get rid of it to get the i's to cancel out. It's 1 minus 2i. So to get rid of it, you take the opposite of the i. So we're going to multiply both the top and the bottom by 1 plus 2i on both the top and the bottom, which means I need to foil the bottom and foil the top. It's just a lot of foiling. So 5 times 1 is 5, 5 times 2i is 10i, 3i times 1 is 3i, 3i times 2i is 6i squared. On the bottom, we get 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 2i is 2i, negative 2i times 1 is negative 2i, and negative 2i times 2i is negative 4i squared. Remember, all your i squareds become negative 1s, and let's combine like terms, so 2i and negative 2i cancel. So I've got a negative 1 in there, negative 1 in there. So that becomes a negative 6 on top. That becomes a positive 4. So I combine my like terms to get 5 in the bottom. 5 and negative 6 is negative 1 plus 13i over 5. Here I come to save the day. So when I come back, we will finish up with the absolute value of complex numbers and with some basic, hopefully, addition and subtraction of complex numbers.